Good morning. Once again, we've saved you the best seat in the house for worship. It's time to prepare, so you might want to gather a few items. We'll be lighting a candle together during our time of worship, and we'll also partake of communion this morning, so you'll want to gather those elements. Whatever you have around the house will work just fine. Children will have a special time together, so they'll want to be close by. As you prepare your space and your hearts for worship, we offer these announcements. As we gather for worship this morning, we'd love to know that you're here. We have a new attendance form and the link is attached to, to this video. Please fill it out and click the submit button. As you do that, there are a few opportunities I'd like to remind you of for the week. Bedtime stories will continue to be shared on Sunday and Wednesday evenings at seven. On Wednesdays at 7.30 on Facebook Live, we'll share a time of reflection and evening prayer. On Thursday evening at 7, we have a time of study and conversation on Zoom. You'll find links to all of these in the midweek update and on our church website. Good morning. When we go to chapel at 10, we often sing the beloved children's song, Jesus Loves the Little Children. I'm sure you're familiar with the words, Jesus loves the little children, all the children of the world, red and yellow, black and white, they are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. Although this is a children's song, it speaks the truth of Jesus's love for all of us. For Jesus does indeed love every one of us. We are all God's children. Knowing that, let's gather around, for Jesus is calling us to come to him. Let us come and worship God together. Today is Mother's Day. And I'm thinking today about all of the women in my life who have helped to mother me in the faith. Women who've shown me unconditional love, women who have shaped my discipleship, women whose faith has stood the test of time. You'll hear a bit about one of the mothers of my faith in today's sermon. 
Today as we gather and we remember the women who have mothered our faith, we sing together, Faith of Our Mothers. David and John Allen will lead us and the words will be on the screen. In just a moment, we'll light our prayer candles and exchange the peace. But first, I want you to know that at First Christian, we want to pray for you and with you. If you have particular prayer needs today, I invite you to leave those in the comments, which you will find right below the video, or email them to Dixon in the church office. We have a weekly prayer list that is emailed, and if you would like to be on that list, please let Dixon know. There will be a link for that in this week's midweek update. And so we invite you all to subscribe to that and uh, pray for one another. Now, if you have your prayer candle, let's light that together. Now the peace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all, and also with you. Christ's peace. Good morning, friends. As we prepare and to share in a time of prayer together, I have an announcement I just can't wait to share with you. Tom and Susan Scales are the proud parents of Jaquan Judd Scales. The adoption was finalized just a couple of days ago, and we celebrate with them. Our, our hearts are filled with joy uh, for this new life um, that they are creating as they uh, bond together as a family. I invite you to leave comments below in joy and celebration with them. And now, as we prepare our hearts for prayer, I'd like to share with you that during this time of prayer, we will light candles uh, for the mothers in our lives, um, for the mothers who were present and those who weren't, for the hurt that we may have experienced, uh, for the grace that we offer as we seek forgiveness, um, for all of the ways that we create family together. There will be a time when we light a candle for the prayers of your heart, and I invite you to share those with God out loud or quietly. And now, 
I invite you to center yourself. Take a deep breath and pray with me. God with a mother's heart. In this time of prayer, we thank you for your love. We thank you for Jesus who showed us your way of love. Love that seeks us. Love that calls us to you. Love that makes us one. We are grateful to be called your children. Called by name. Called even before we were formed in our mother's womb. Called into your worldwide family where there is such diversity such individuality, such creativity, such beauty. We ask that rejoicing in the diversity of humankind, we might always love as Jesus loved us, that we might always appreciate people of all faith and cultures, that we might see what connects us rather than what divides. Forgive us for the times when we have failed to love well. Remembering the whole family of God, we pray for this world we inhabit, and we give you thanks for our own families. Remembering especially today those who mothered us. For birth mothers, adoptive mothers, surrogate mothers, foster mothers, aunts, grandmothers, sisters, and friends. For all women who have shared their faith with us. For the love of those mothers who are still with us. For the love of those mothers who are now absent. For those mothers who have been hurt, disillusioned, or disappointed in their role as mother. For those who have been denied a longed for chance at motherhood. For those whose years of mothering have been cut short by the loss of a child. For mothers whose children do not have clean water or enough food to eat. For those who have strained relationships with their mothers. For those who carry deep wounds. And for those who cannot be with their mother on this day. We lift up before you, O oh God, the members of our human family around the world and offer our prayers to you in this quiet space. Holy Mother of us all, touch us with your healing peace and gentle embrace that we may walk in the steps of Jesus who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power 
and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Though the church building is closed, the church is very much open. Yes, our building is closed because we care about the health and well-being of others during this COVID-19 period. But the church is very much open and the ministries of Jesus Christ continue to be carried out through the ministries and missions of First Christian Church. Ministries like the Debbie Blue Food Pantry. We care for all of God's children through the ongoing work of the church. And during this time, I'd like to encourage you to continue the generosity that you have always shown through your gift of tithe and offering. You can give through a check in the mail addressed to the church, or you can give online and you'll see instructions for that. We thank you for the ways that you are generous in your giving so that the work of Christ continues for all of God's children. Let us pray. Gracious and loving God, we give you thanks that you have called us all your children. And we give you thanks that you call us into ministries of care. Help us to give that your ministries might be carried out. Bless us, bless our gifts, and strengthen us to be the love of Christ in the world. Amen. It's time for our children to come and gather together for a moment. You know, I checked in with Callan and Linnea after last Sunday. They were having a bit of trouble, and I hope they're doing better this week. Do you think they are? Let's find out. Hey friends, we wanted to take you on a tour to meet our great big family. How many people are in your family? I bet there are more than you think there are. Why don't you come with us while we go to meet our family? I'm so excited, I can't wait to introduce everybody. This is gonna be so much fun. Hey, I've got a joke for you. Okay. Why do melons get married? I don't know why. Because they can't elope. <laughs> <laughs> okay, Lene. <Linnea. laughs> We're at our first house. We can't wait for you to meet them. This is Annie, Lakeland, and Maya. And they're part of our family. Hey Cal, what? Which kind of bear is most condescending? I don't know which kind of bear. A panda. <laughs> All right, this is the next house on our tour. And this is Cosette and Felicity. Wow, that's the Eiffel Tower behind them. I hope I get to see the Eiffel Tower one day. What happens when you go to the bathroom in France? I uh, would. <laughs> European. <laughs> Look at that garden. I could sit outside their house forever. Jamie, Jenny, and Josie live here with their parents and grandparents. I bet that's a lot of fun. What is a fish with what? <laughs> a 
like a tuna fish. Like like a tuna fish. Like tuna fish. Do you get it? Do you... <laughs> that one was good. Wow. This house looks a lot like the apartment we lived in when we first moved to Vestavia. This is where Lauren, Kayla, Lizzie, and Daniel live with their dog, Bailey. What day of the week are most twins born? I don't think I want to know, but what? Tuesday. These are getting progressively worse, Linnea. <laughs> oh, it's a rainbow house. I want to live here. Well, you can't. This is where Rashid and Ratika live. And I don't think they'd appreciate you inviting yourself to live with them. Hey, where do cows go for entertainment? The movies. You said it wrong. If you're gonna take my punchline, at least say it right. It's the And this is the final house on our great family adventure. I think Nadia and Winta live in such a neat house. I've never seen a house like that before. I'd like to come back sometime when we can visit. Speaking of coming back, what do you call a boomerang that won't come back? A stick. <laughs> no, nothing. Okay. Do you know what rhymes with boo and also stinks? You. Well, we're back at our house now. Wow, we really do have a big family. A family spread all over the world. We have siblings everywhere. I can't believe how big our family really is. Thanks for joining us on our adventure. We can't wait to see you next time. Will you all pray with us to finish it out? Can you bow your head with me? Dear God. Dear God. Thank you for our family. Thank you for our family. Our great big humongous family of God. Our great big humongous family of God. Amen. Amen. Bye guys. See you next week. This week, as I started my ministry at First Christian, I began wondering, what's the best seat in our house? Maybe it's here behind the pulpit. Or maybe it's back here. Is the best seat this one, where people sing God's praises? Or maybe it's this one where we can relax with a nice cup of coffee. The seat in my office is pretty good. But there's too many boxes right now, so I tried this seat outside the Farkas room, and it seemed a lot better. There are seats where people have control, and seats designed for holy contemplation. And then there are seats that help you swing into action. But I think I found a seat like no other, a seat at this table. This is pretty good, but something doesn't seem quite right. Oh, yes, this feels better. It's much better when shared with friends. So friends, come close. 
There's a seat saved just for you. This seat has got your name on it. The best seat in our house, it turns out, is right here at the table of our Lord. So let's gather around, for at this table we are family and the Lord is calling us to share a meal. And so we remember that on that final night as Jesus gathered with his friends around the table, he took bread and after giving thanks, he broke it and shared it with them, inviting them to eat and to remember the love and grace that God has for all of us. Then he took the cup and he shared it with them, reminding them that this cup brought forth new life, forgave sins, and invited all to participate in this family of God. And so we remember, as often as we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. Will you pray with me? Holy God, we are grateful for this family that you have created, for the love that you share, and for the life that we live in Christ. Take this bread and this cup and use them to create in us new life so that we might share that life with the world around us. It is in the name of Christ who offers these gifts we pray. Amen. Our reading this morning is from Mark's Gospel, chapter 10, verses 13 through 16. People were bringing little children to him in order that he might touch them. And the disciples spoke sternly to them. But when Jesus saw this, he was indignant and said to them, Let the little children come to me. Do not stop them, for it is to such as these that the kingdom of God belongs. Truly, I tell you, whoever does not receive the kingdom of God as a little child will never enter it. And he took them up in his arms, laid his hands on them, and blessed them. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. I have a vivid memory of love from my childhood. It's a memory about Miss Abernathy, my childhood Sunday school teacher. She had a nurturing way about her, and I loved entering her classroom. It was ritualistic, and it was something every child looked forward to on Sunday mornings. When the Sunday school bell rang, and yes, we did have bells in our Sunday school. When the bell rang, we would rush to line up outside the doorway, and Miss Abernathy would fling the door wide open, and then she would go sit down in the classroom on a circular carpet, and she would begin to sing. Here we are together, together, together. Here we are together, together again. And then she would call us to join her. One by one, she would call our names as she sang. Kelly's going to gather, together, together. Kelly's going to gather, together with us. And hearing her name, Kelly would take her place on the rug. And the song went on and on until all of us were gathered with Miss Abernathy on the rug. And then she would teach us about Jesus. And our lesson would end with the familiar song, Jesus loves me, this I know, for the Bible tells me so. She would end our Sunday school time together by reminding us that Jesus was a friend and teacher we could trust with our problems. We would be allowed to share our prayer concerns with her and with each other, and then we would all pray together. And as we were leaving her classroom, she would call out, Remember, remember Jesus always loves you and so do I, and you can depend on that. Our story in Mark's gospel today 
it always makes me think about Miss Abernathy. And when I read it, I can feel once again her welcome and, and her blessing for all of the church's children. It was the way I first understood Jesus. And I still today think that Jesus might look an awful lot like Miss Abernathy. By the time we get to this passage in Mark's gospel, Jesus and the disciples have been on the road together for a good while. Jesus has gained quite a reputation for healing and working miraculous acts of compassion for helping people in their time of need. He's healed withered hands. He's cast out unclean spirits, fed thousands on just a couple of pieces of bread and some fish. He's cured a deaf man and even healed a young boy. By the time we get to our story, it's no wonder that parents are clamoring to bring their children to Jesus so he can touch them. The disciples get a little too protective of Jesus, and they try to block the way and prevent the children from getting too close to him. But Jesus, always having to teach his own followers, says, let the kids come to me. Don't stop them because you know what? The kingdom belongs to these children. And more than that, anyone who doesn't exhibit the kind of faith that can be found in these children won't enter it. I'm betting his disciples were thinking, you want us to be childish and immature? We're grown men. And you want us to act like children? Children don't even count as full human beings yet. Those disciples, they just don't get it. And it's understandable. All the faithful people are waiting on a Messiah who will come with might and power, strength to overthrow the government and to create a new kingdom. But what they haven't grasped yet is that this Messiah who came into the world as a vulnerable infant himself, he is creating a new kind of kingdom, one that the world has never seen. It's, it's counter to the ways of the world. His kingdom won't be built on power and might or conquering others. His kingdom will be built on things like vulnerability and on dependence. His kingdom will be built on something more substantial than any other kingdom has ever known. And so Jesus welcomes these vulnerable children. I think the disciples, I think they might be worried that Jesus is spending too much time with people who can't help him gain power, the kind of power they think a kingdom needs to be built on. In fact, you know, just about a day before this occurrence that we've read this morning, when Jesus and his disciples are on their way to Capernaum, the disciples had an argument. They were walking on the road with each other and they were arguing over who would be the greatest among them. And when Jesus found out what they were arguing about, he took a child on his knee and he told them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me welcomes not only me, but the one who sent me. Children were the very symbol of powerlessness. It's as if Jesus is saying, welcome powerlessness. And when you do, you will understand that I came not to achieve great power, but to serve those who are powerless. And that will be your work too, by the way. That will be the way my kingdom will be built. That will be how the one who sent me, how, how God's reign will come. Is it any wonder that we modern day disciples have just as much difficulty understanding all of this? Everything in our world tells us, be strong, be independent, pull up your own bootstraps, don't ask for help, don't be vulnerable. We applaud the do-it-yourself mentality, and we think it's necessary to get on top. But as my, say, my favorite seminary professor would say, Jesus comes on the scene just in time to turn everything upside down. 
Dr. Dowd is a Mark scholar, and she says that this act of Jesus taking the children to himself, it's a profound teaching for all of us, all of us disciples, about how to enter into the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God, she says, is not entered into through achieving status of independence and autonomy. It's built on vulnerability, and there is nothing more vulnerable than love. God's reign cannot be, it cannot be earned or achieved. It must be received. It must be received the way that Jesus received the children with his open arms. It must be received the way that children receive care in order to live and to grow. And here's the kicker. We are all children. We are 18-year-old and 46-year-old, 72, 91-year-old children of God. We never grow out of being children of God, and God never grows weary of caring for us. The Bible is so wonderfully full of holes. There are things left unrecorded and unanswered, because not a word of what Jesus said to those children is recorded in Scripture. But what a powerful lesson he preached that day. Jesus swept aside all barriers that were raised up against the children. He didn't just talk to them of God's love. He held them in God's love. He blessed them in it. It does say that in our scripture. He took them into his arms. He laid his hands on them and blessed them. You know, come to think of it, that's how I felt every Sunday in Miss Abernathy's class. I felt no barriers to her love, and she didn't offer any barriers to God's love. She didn't just talk to us about the love of Jesus. She held us in the circle of that love. As she called our names and she called us to come to her, she offered us a blessing, the blessing of God, the, the blessing of worth and unconditional love. It is true. The kingdom of God is not built on the power of this world, but that it turns the power of the world upside down. The kingdom of God is built on something much more valuable. It's built on unconditional love, a love that God has for all of God's children. Our, our beloved disciples, Pastor Fred Craddock, used to be fond of saying, God is a single parent who does whatever it takes to keep our wild and wonderful family together. And knowing our need, God, through Jesus Christ, has gone to the links of throwing the doors of the kingdom house wide open so that we will know that all it takes is love in order to find our way home. What does the kingdom of God look like? It looks like all of us, five-year-olds, 17-year-olds, 45-year-olds, 86-year-olds, 99-year-old children circled up together around Jesus who calls us to himself in order to bless us, in order to show us a love so deep, so strong, in order to show us a love so big that we can never outgrow it. So let all of us Children of God, knowing our dependence on the love we cannot outgrow, let us come to Jesus. He is waiting. He's waiting with his arms outstretched to call us by name, to call us in and bless us. The question is, are we willing? Do we have enough faith? to enter into the vulnerability of that kind of radical love.
children of God. It's time to let go of the powers that the world provides. They can never stand up to the power of Christ's love. And Christ is calling us into the family, calling us. We are children of God. Amen. A wise man in a church that I once served said to me one time, why in the world do we think that Jesus Loves Me is a song only for children, a song that we somehow outgrow? Yes, it's easy to teach children, but so is the Lord's Prayer. It's the prayer that children learn first, probably. And I've never once heard anyone say, you know, I think you've outgrown the Lord's Prayer. You can stop praying that now. We need to sing Jesus Loves Me, he said. And I agree. So this morning, let's sing this song of faith, a song we probably all learned very early on. And as we sing it, May it sustain and instruct us. Let's sing together. I was part of the Andros mission team. Andros is a mission that Birmingham First was part of for many years, teaching the love of God to the children on the island of Andros, Bahamas. Each day as we ended our time with the children, Jim Brooks led us in a benediction. Today I want to offer that benediction for us as we leave worship. It's a call and response benediction and so I invite you to repeat after me as we close our time of worship. I am a child of God, wholly made, divinely inspired. I am a child of God. Amen.